If you missed last week, we cut a pretty big hole in our boat. Holy crap, Zach, what did we just do? <laughs> and hoisted our incredible new sail. It is so beautiful. <laughs> and this week, expect nothing less. There'll be boat life and this is the... Is my seasick bucket. It's, it's so boring. Finicky engines. <laughs> Hello. Our kettle just broke. Great. <laughs> so I've just put that in the, the bin. It was glass. I had no idea. Not buying a glass kettle again. But I'm just heading to the marina office because tomorrow our crew come. They land in Panama City at about I think it's 8.30 at night. So we're gonna get a shuttle bus from the marina to Cologne, which is on the Atlantic side. And then we're gonna get a bus from Cologne to Panama City and maybe pick up a few things there. I think we wanna look for a water filter because we've been drinking just tap water for all these months and we should really filter our water. <laughs> and then we're gonna get go to the airport and then get an Uber XL back to the boat because there's gonna be five of us. So. Yeah, got a few errands to run this morning. All exciting stuff. It's really nice the marina has a shuttle bus, which is free, because it is, yeah, a bit remote, I guess, without it. But it's a beautiful morning. The birds are chirping. Definitely seen better days that thing. So Christmas has come early, late, early for the next year, not sure, it's January now, <laughs> on Taylor today as we have just had a massive package arrive. Two packages. Two packages arrive. This one's super heavy. <laughs> and you have no idea how excited about this we are. Holy wow. cow. That's a serious bit That's of business. Awesome. This is a four person over 24 hour life raft. Sounds pretty morbid to say it, but we're crossing the Pacific and there's a lot less boats out there to rescue should you need to be. So we wanted to go for a over 24 hour life raft. That just means that we can, as the name says, we can stay in it for over 24 hours with enough supplies to survive on. Yeah, this is a serious bit of kit and yeah. we're super thankful to Crusader and Survivor Tech for helping us out with this. Yeah. yeah, we have no words really for how grateful we are about that. We are so honoured to be working with a, an amazing safety company because in the end we want this journey to last as long as possible yeah. um, and one of those the ways we will do that is just to be as safe as possible and that's you know life jackets having PLBs which will be in here and like a good life raft. Our last life raft, I don't know if we ever shared this, but we picked up from Facebook Marketplace for about 80 quid um, and it was 18 years old, so it was on its last serviceable legs. It's actually been a bit out of date the last few months. It's been a bit out of date <laughs> the last few months. It's not something we're proud of, no, but, but we knew this was arriving and we weren't doing any big offshore, but the confidence that a good offshore life raft gives you is oh, huge. So yeah, very excited to be getting this on. But we it might. It's beautiful as well. It's so much nicer than our <laughs> it other one. Is. The other one's all cracked and beaten up. It's on the side. So we've got our horseshoe oh, boy. We also have these safety lines, which are so much better than the other ones because our other ones only had two clips. They had a clip to go onto you and a clip to the boat, but this one has three clips. You can always clip, be clipped as you're on clipping and re-clipping if wow, that makes sense. Those are so nice. A life jacket for you. And I'll have to get for me. Oh, and PLB is in there as well. Personal locator beacons are if you are unfortunate enough to go over the edge and fall in the sea while you're sailing, the beacon will transmit and the boat will be able to see you on 
LAS and navigate back to you but on the chart plotter, which is crazy. When we were in the UK, Force 4, all those moons ago, we actually had no preference over life jacket. All we knew is we wanted an offshore life jacket, which was 150 newtons or more, and we wanted it to be comfortable because then we'd wear it more, um, and we also wanted to make sure it had a light and a hood um, and all those great offshore things. And straps, leg straps, that's really important and automatic and a harness <laughs> just a few things then however the thing that made us go for crusader initially was the fact that they're comfortable to look up we tried on i don't know five or six different brands and they all come up really high on your neck so when you're looking at sales your neck's hitting on this life jacket and we just really didn't want that and even this one which is like the super duper one it doesn't touch your head if you look it's sure it touches my bun but it really doesn't touch your neck, which is so nice. Um, it just means that it's so much more comfortable and yeah, so excited to I'll just... hopefully never get to use them. Yeah, I'm so excited to hopefully never use this. After whacking the new life raft on the side, it's time to have some fun with the old. <laughs> It's a lot more rigid than I thought, yeah. but it's smaller than I thought for four people. It's frozen there. Oh. It's all the compressed gas dumping, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> One of the drills we wanted to perform was trying to write it if it flipped. And in a pool, this was pretty easy. But out there, it might not be quite so simple. <laughs> <laughs> wow. oh, it must be the battery for the light, yeah. Yeah, and you can, I think you can put it on and off as you want. Oh. I'm not sure. Gosh, it gets so hot in here. Well, there's a thing here, yeah. yeah. When the ring comes in, yeah, just external, internal light. And that's on. That's on? Yep. Okay. And off? Uh, when you put it inside. Okay. And now it's off. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on your head. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I'd let people guess what that is. A mirror? Oh, this is no. from the... What's that? What is this? <laughs> what are they? Are they sitting in It's a mirror. It's a mirror, I think so, yeah. It's, 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 not, yeah, it's not a very it's good this. mirror. Your accuracy on a flat mirror is not going to work. Ah. That's why it's rounded. Oh. This is the. This is my seasick bucket. It's, it's oh, so There's a sponge. Yeah, chuck me in the bucket. There's um a torch, waterproof electric torch. Okay. Or a shower. Oh, it has holes in it. Why would you want a sick bucket with holes in it? I don't think it's a sick bucket. <laughs> There's two very small paddles. Which are very sweet. A pump. But this doesn't fit this, so that. Oh, it's a design flaw. Yeah, there, there is that. And there. then it says yeah. life saving yeah. signals. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. Which That's is nice. nice. It says what you should have in your grab bag in the life raft. Mm. By that point, it would be probably too late to change what you have in your grab bag. 
It's literally you should have spare spectacles. Oh great, now it's time. Well that was a lot of fun. It's still inflated and everyone's having a go in it, so pretty harrowing to be stuck at sea in it, but in a pool, it's great fun. If this is your first episode and you're new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to follow our journey. And if you have been part of the tribe for a while, thanks. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you and your support. We are just on the bus to the bus terminal in Clone. Uh, everyone actually hopped off. We're now are on our own. Lovely little bus. But we are going to go to the bus terminal where we're going to get one bus to Panama City. And then we're going have to look get, around Panama City for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, have a little look around Panama City, try and pick some stuff up. And then we are going to the airport to pick up our three crew. We're very, very excited about it. And the boats are clean and ready, the bridge is stopped. Um, yeah, they're currently in, in, the in the air to the US and then they'll change and go to Panama City. So, very excited. On the bus to Panama City and Mr Ranger who is the guy who drives the Shelter Bay Marina bus told us how to do it and um, there's some two express buses which go directly from Cologne to Shelter Bay, uh, Cologne to Panama City and then there's one which is called the chicken bus and it stops at every single stop and the reason it's called the chicken bus is because it's so full of people people are sat on top of each other out the windows holding onto the side of the bus people are falling out of every orifice of the bus um, so he said if you can maybe... Sounds like a battery farm chickens. Yeah. <laughs> chickens. So um, we decided to avoid that one and just go for the... Splash out and pay $4 instead of 2 $4 instead of $2 on the express bus. But it's really cold in here. We were worried about it being too hot. But it's freezing in here. So yeah, it's all, all part of the experience. Lots of legroom. <laughs> it wasn't long before we arrived at Albrook Mall which is apparently the biggest in the Americas, according to a sign there anyway. So we just got some food and I, and I went for the classic Subway and Zach thought he'd experiment a bit and walk around and find something a bit different. And I just got a message saying it's not pizza and it's not sushi. It's sushi pizza. It's sushi pizza. And this is, oh, it's so good. It's by a company called Sushi Express. I don't know if they're a big chain or whatever. If you've heard of it, let us know because... I think they are a chain. They sure they are. Okay, it's basically... Fried rice, salmon, smoked salmon. Like crispy rice though, it like holds together. Avocado and this kind spicy of... Spicy mayo. Like, yeah, spicy it's mayo. Sriracha mayo, isn't it? Yeah. But it's so good. We've never had this before or seen it before. Ah. But Zach did like this happy dance when he was walking to the table. Well, I hadn't seen it by then, so I didn't know. It might have been awful. Mm. Oh, so we just hopped off the bus at Tucuman Airport, and that was quite, a, was quite an adventure. We're at the airport now, though. It's just over here. It's super cheap. It's 75 cents, wasn't 75 it? 75 cents each for the Plus bus. $2 for the ticket, but we can use that as many times as we want. Yeah, like the card, but it's about an hour and a quarter journey. Yeah, we're miles away from the city now. All in yeah. all in a day's adventure. Let's, Let's go to in. the airport. <laughs> we lied. There's one more bus to get from Terminal 1 to Terminal 2, so... Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello the crew are on the boat. We picked them up last night from the airport. Um, and then we got a long Uber back. <laughs> the taxi driver even said to us, you do know that's a very long way, but it was fine in the end. But yeah, we have Xander who is up there right now. We met Xander in Annapolis at the boat show. Um, he actually owns a boat up in Boston and it's currently very cold up there. It so. is, yep, all shrink wrapped. <laughs> yeah, we offered him to come down and get away from the cold for a little bit, um, see some, some of the tropics and help us take Taylor through the canal. Um, so yeah, you're on board for a week yep. and hopefully we'll be crewing for us in the future too. Excited for it. We'll head out. These guys are gonna love being on camera. <laughs> and then we also have Stuart here and we have Martin there who we also met in the UK and these guys helped us out a lot 
um, Martin with electrics and Stuart with our engine. So these are very valuable people to have on board and we're very excited for them to be out with us um, for the week taking the boat through the canal. We've got all our lines and boys as well. Oh yeah, uh, yesterday we got back to the boat and look what was delivered to us while we were gone. Some really, really big fenders and lines. That's made it all feel very, very real. Big fenders. And this huge line, look at this. We're just gonna wander around the marina, show the guys around and probably go for a dip because it's a scorcher today. Cool boat. Yeah, that's cool. The people in the video look tiny compared to <laughs> massive. Um, I guess so. Like 1930s, all the buildings we kind of dated back to. What personal um, Where the Ark of the Canal was created. Oh, was it? Yeah. Cool, yeah. This is this is all like military installation to protect the canal back in the day. A quick recce of the marina, and it was time to give the engine a once over. Right, Zach. Tell me what we're up to this morning. We are just checking oil levels and everything. Which oil? Um, engine oil and gearbox oil and I'm going to top up the water level as well. Nice. All very easy stuff. We are in our final day of preparation and we're waiting for an email today to say whether we are heading through the canal all day tomorrow or if we're going to do an overnight in the lake tomorrow night um, and that will be dependent on whether we hop on to anchor at 4pm today or not. So we're kind of cracking through some last jobs, making sure the engine's all great. We also need to, I'll explain more about this, but we have an agent on board. Uh, we have an advisor on board during the transit and we have to cook them very substantial meals. And we don't eat meat, so we didn't think it would be a requirement for us to cook the meat, but we just found out that we do have to give them meat. So I'm going to pop to the store in a little bit and see if they've got any meat, but... I don't know. I, I don't even know how to cook meat, so I think it's going to be a case of some ham or pre-cooked chicken or something. But yeah, that was a bit unexpected. Um, one of those things though, we have to just do what they want <laughs> to get through to the other side. Uh, I guess, I guess it's a turkey or ham. Here, turkey thigh. So we were in luck. The store had turkey ham, so. I guess we're making them cheese and ham toasties for lunch tomorrow. Maybe we'll sneak some soya in the evening with that chicken. I don't know, we won't fall for that. They won't know. They won't know. <laughs> Whilst I was meat shopping, Zach and Stuart were deciphering a bit of an engine DIY job from a previous owner. There's, what do you think it was used for? So they they used the, what would you call that in our, in our cabin? It's the Robusto exhaust, because it's double, double skin, so yeah. they used it as an exhaust at some point. So exhaust for a diesel heater that the boat used to have, but they've teed off some bits on the engine to it as well. It's a bit I wonder if he strange. used it for a feed or something on the Robusto or a heater that was a water one. Yeah. The preheated water. I don't know. It's it's a weird way he's took it out and then he's just put that in there. There's a bit on our exhaust which is just really bizarre and it just doesn't really need to be there. I've always been puzzled by it. It's also teed off to the old grease packer as oh, well. Oh, that bit that's a bit corroded? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit of a bodge in it there. You want to get rid of that. I will. I'm, I'm going to cut it. it off and just... I probably could do that in the... Oh, no, I won't do that in the water. No, no. No, no come no, through that quite quickly. It's pretty loose. Okay, if you can just wiggle that and try and pull it off, it might be quite on there. If yeah, you can't. Force cable uh, line as well, so just massage it off. There we go, slowly, slowly. That's it. Just let the water drip out of it as well. Keep going. Just flip it, it the right way yeah. up, yeah? Yeah, I will. So, I think there's loads of water dripping in. I'll actually wiggle it so it comes off this top end first. Yeah. It's nearly done. Oh yeah, stop putting it back on, put it back on, put it back on. <laughs> the bottom of the heater exchange has just got water in it. It'll be alright, let's go in the bilge. Is there any electrics below it? No. No, no, just go straight in the bilge. You'll be alright. Yeah, go on, just slowly. It's only at the bottom of the heat exchange, it's your water that causes the antifreeze. Yeah, yeah, so go on. just yeah, put yeah. it up, put it up right, yeah? Yeah. Stuff something in it. 
Okay. Mm. okay. It won't uh, slow down now. And is that good? Sorry. It's well, fine. I'd hold it up. I'm holding. I'm holding yeah. It up. Yeah, Thanks. and then we'll take all. Of, I'll take this one off up here, and I'll connect it quickly, and then we can just get all this old system off here. Chuck me the do that. Great success. I'm gonna just put that outside, yeah. back on the dock. We've taken off a load of weird things. There's still a funny little thing. You know that little weird bit below where you are? Yeah. Where the breather was. Yeah. That's all plugged off now with that. Right. Which is just gonna stick up there, but nothing come out of that now. And the hosing that runs through to our head in our cupboard mm -hmm. is plugged off with that. Oh, so but that But that's way above the water. And we'll use this at some point, but if like rain hits the side of it, it'll drip down here still. So that's why I've plugged this up. Oh, so this little bit is still a bit funky. But yeah, I'll, I, so when we haul out in whenever, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take all of that out, do away with all of this, take out down there, grind that away, so it's nice and smooth and everything like that, and then we'll properly thicken the epoxy it down there and make it look pretty. And it'll be yeah, good. okay, cool. We can finally do away with all that ridiculous. And no water's there. gonna like pump in there and jet the bolt no, out. No, I mean, this is above the water line anyway, by quite yeah. way, because those, those skin fittings there are like, just above it this is way above it but no water can go through there anyway because there's a bolt really like screwed into there all the way so okay yeah Good job. all right I'm gonna that. just gonna hop in here and say that i wish i could go back in time and say stop don't take that bit off the engine we really need that however it was really corroded and we didn't think we needed it so we took it off however don't want to ruin too many future episodes, but this might be a cause for some engine issues. <laughs> Ongoing engine issues. <laughs> Potential rebuild of engine. Whoa. There was a bit of um, force going there, wasn't there? I'm not going to say anything more than that. Yeah, we thought it was the batteries that were causing the engine not to start in this next clip. Um, so we charged the engine batteries up. Kind of gonna leave it there. Enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> anyway, once we had that issue fixed, or so we thought, it was time to get the rental fenders on. These were dropped off at our boat last week and are part of the requirements of the Panama Canal Transit. We got all the fenders out for the canal. Uh, the authorities here provided them. Watch a bunch of lines too. Got eight giant uh, fender balls out. Around lunchtime, we received an email from our agent stating that rather than doing half of the canal in one day and the rest the following day, we were going to be leaving at 4 a.m. and doing the entire crossing in a day. However, doing the maths, with us doing five knots, it would take at least 10 hours to do the transit, which made us question whether we would sit fast enough. So a phone call to a friend who had just transited the day before was in store. It says tomorrow early morning, 4 a.m. all the way. If it says all the way, that means they want to try and get us through all in one day, yeah? Yeah, 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 totally. But if you guys can all even five knots, there's no way possible you can do so. <laughs> uh, Well, I mean, we could, we could do six, and we could actually yeah. almost do, we could probably, I don't know, we've never, like, floored it. So I don't know how fast we can go, but go we could probably yeah. go six and a half, but we're never going to say that to them because if we don't, we get fined. And we said on the paper five knots, and Eric confirmed yeah. with us that that's fine. Yeah. So yeah, we might see you tomorrow, we might not see you tomorrow, but either way, we'll see you in the Pacific somewhere. Yeah, we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> yeah, sure. cool, we'll keep in touch. Okay. Excellent. Awesome, thanks, thanks Bye. Okay, bye. So it's now about 9 p.m. and we just radioed Cristobal signal station and they've confirmed a four o'clock pick up tomorrow morning, the advisor. So we're gonna set our alarms for 2.45 because we've still gotta leave the marina and get out into the anchorage to pick up the advisor. So yeah, it's gonna be an early start. It's gonna be a long day tomorrow, but really looking forward to it. Lots of mixed emotions, excited, nervous. Yeah, big feelings. It's sad to leave the Atlantic behind, excited about the Pacific. It's more tomorrow about, obviously you know that you're leaving at four and they say you're going to do it all in one day, but it's more just the unknown, I don't know. Um, but anyway, either way it goes, it's going to be great and it's going to be a really ex big experience and going to be amazing and I just hope that 
right all we can stop and think wow this is awesome <laughs> hope it's not too stressful but i'm sure i'll be fine and people do it every day hundreds of boats go through a week so yeah can't believe we're leaving the atlantic behind <laughs> crossed this time last year and now we're going but yeah ready to slow down on the other side a bit well that really doesn't feel real it honestly feels like yesterday we were letting our lines go in Plymouth and now we're about to enter another ocean. Tune in next Monday for that transit. There's sure to be a lot of excitement, angst. Oh, they're getting close. And pure chaos at times. Stop, 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 stop. Till then. <laughs>